So I'm using this canoe today to go musky fishing because I did $4,000 in damages to my boat by striking a rock. Watch the video here. Eating. Oh. Oh, dude. Oh, no. He just was beak hooked. Maybe that was a musky chasing those little bait fish. This is my first figure eight. Musky. I was ready, man. <laughs> I was ready as soon as you came in. Oh, he was hot. So I am fishing a very skinny river today uh, for musky and uh, this is a super shallow river. In fact, it is so shallow that when you do figure eights, you have to do the figure eights with only half of your rod in the water because if you go any deeper than that, the tip of your rod will actually hit the bottom of the creek. And uh, there's supposed to be some really nice muskies in here, so I'll meet you out in the water and uh, we'll take our first cast in just a little bit. Okay, so I don't know if you saw that on camera, but all the way up there, it's probably about 150 to 200 yards away, there's a really, really big splash. Really big splash. So I'm going to head over that way within casting distance of it and see what it is. It seems to be getting a little deeper here. We have a very shallow section just behind me, and the deep pools ahead of the really shallow areas and behind them are very, very good, good spots. I also love river bends because there's current breaks and then there's usually shallow water to the left of the big bend. And then it dips off really, really quick. Couldn't have been a very big one, but we will cast back at him again. All right, just a little update here for you. Um, I've gone all the way up to the river to the point where I don't want to go up anymore. Uh, I have had one scenario where I came into contact with a fish. It was just a, a little blow up, so I don't know if it was just a nip from a bigger fish or if it was just a small fish, but I'm starting my drift back down. I've actually thrown on the Foxfire, there it is. Got some weeds on it, gotta get, off, get them off, but uh, heading down to some deeper holes here, I'm gonna try the Magic Foxfire. All right, stay tuned. This is not, not good at all. There he is. 
nice low 30s we won't measure them because we uh, want to let them go in the warm water it wouldn't be an SG angling episode without a really bad net job all right spare me your hatred about the bad net job we're well aware um, it's been a little while since I've caught a muskie so I'm a little rusty with uh, netting netting fish <laughs> Uh, but you know what that fish was not out of the water for more than about 30 seconds or so um, We didn't measure them. That's really important when water's a little bit warmer like in the mid 70s Like it is now to make sure that you release those fish. There's no reason to uh, Bump them if they're not a record-breaking fish. Here's the area that I caught them in So we've got like a little like island sort of and it kind of forms into like a little bit of a neck down area Currents a little higher that fish was hanging out right off this tree this fallen tree here and uh he just came up and smacked it this is literally like my third or fourth pass through this area and uh i noticed some clouds are kind of coming in wind was picking up and the rain started to actually drizzle a little bit you, you won't be able to see that on camera um but i thought that was pretty cool that you know things just changed suddenly after about four or five hours of fishing so uh, i'm gonna take another pass maybe it's a feeding window let's see what happens just to give you an idea of how shallow this river actually is, here's my paddle. And my paddle hits the ground right where the fish hit. So I would say, you know, <laughs> it's just four feet, three feet, four feet, something like that. And uh, that fish hit the fat bee. Great topwater lure. There's a big muskie right there. Big, 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 big. Close to 40 inches, probably. Let's see if he's interested in what I have to offer him here. All right, well, he's not interested. When you're retrieving a topwater bait like this, sometimes it's the subtle things that make a big difference. If I have my rod tip high, the nose of the bait is out of the water and it's not moving as much water. That means the propellers are also deeper in the water and it's not gonna make as much of a popping sound. Lowering your rod tip to just a few inches above the water brings the nose down, the props up, it moves more water and makes more of a popping sound. Those have been scenarios in which we seem to have caught a lot of muskies, myself and uh, some other fishing buddies of mine. So keeping that rod tip low also allows you to set the hook when the fish, fish hits this way, right? As opposed to if your rod's already high, it's going to be very difficult to set the hook. You're not going to have as much leverage. Okay, so welcome to day two of this episode. Um, same place, but I'm here on a weekday morning and uh, yeah water levels about the same water temperatures about the same and uh, how do you not start out with top water so we're gonna see if we can do this and maybe see if we can net a fish the proper way this time all right starting out here with the lake x fat b if i say the actual word youtube will flag it but there it is make sure the drag is set nicely and we'll take our first cast. I've set myself up a little bit differently in the canoe. I'm sitting in the back today, hoping that gives me a little bit more stability and more room to fight the fish. Some mistakes I made, a rookie canoeist. So now I'm experienced. It's my second time around, musky fishing in a canoe. So I think I know what I'm doing now. We're coming to one of the best spots in the river right now. There's some laydowns up ahead. We got a couple like jut outs. They're almost uh, like kind of like little like inlet pile ups like you see with inlets and it creates eddies down on the left side. So we got some current changes, some deeper water over by the laydowns. It's a good area. So we want to be really careful about how we sneak up on the spot. I could see a fish hitting right here by the edge of the laydown. Oh 
my goodness! Oh, what an unbelievable strike. Here we go with the net job, you ready? He's wrapped up. Much better than last time. Much better than last time. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> that was unbelievable. Dude. <laughs> Scared the heck out of me. Look at what it did to the hook. That's insane. That's insane. A nice fish, probably 40 inches, somewhere around there. 38 ish. All right, we'll let him go. Well, it was about two or three casts before that catch. I literally said I can see a muskie coming off of this lay down because there's a current break and there's just a lot of ambush opportunity in this fallen tree. So here it is, that's the fallen tree right there. And uh, he totally came off of that because when I went into the figure eight in the eddy, that's when he came up and grabbed it. Boat side, couple acrobatic jumps. Man, it just doesn't get any better than that. All right guys, that is it. Um, thanks for tuning in, super exciting day. Gotta get off the water and gotta get to work. The water's also warming up. So we want to be careful of that. So thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you next time.